Buzz City is here this evening with the members of Articulate Inc. Hi, I'm Carly Jessup. I'm Michelle Brownridge. I'm Amber Dalton. I'm Caitlin Mullen, and we are Articulate Inc., a printmaking collective in Regina, Saskatchewan, made up of four University of Regina printmaking graduates. And what we're looking at is in an old press, and uh, it's a Chandler and... Chandler and Price. Chandler and... 10 by 15 letter press. Letter press, yeah. as opposed to offset? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is the distinction? Uh, the distinction would be movable type. So with this machine, you're not using any sort of plates. You're setting movable pieces of type, like wood type or metal type. And uh, letter by letter. Letter by letter, generally, unless you're using a linotype machine. Um, and basically, that's that's the largest distinction. So it's a bit more labor intensive than offset machines. Okay. And what era would this date from? I dated the serial number on this machine to 1919. So it's uh, almost, you know, 100 years old. Or it's over, yeah. <laughs> it's and, getting up there. And it hasn't been in use for some time? Uh, not at least for the past, I'd say, uh, probably like five or ten years it hasn't been in use. Yeah. How did, how did you hear about it? Um, I was touring this building with a friend of mine who was uh, leasing, wanting to look at leasing it. So we were walking through with a realtor. And um, we walked around the corner and we had been through the upstairs and we came into this creepy basement. <laughs> and it was dark and we couldn't see anything and we had flashlights and um, she walked around the corner before I did and she said, oh, there's a printing press. And I thought she was just kidding because what are the chances of that and something that I would be so excited about. But no, I came around the corner too and shone my flashlight on it and there it was, a letter press. I, like ones I'd been watching on YouTube for six months and I was pretty excited about it and uh, kind of went from there. And so you obtained the rights to it or you yeah. purchased it? Yeah, so the you... realtor put me in contact with the owner of the building and we had some, you know, negotiations back and forth and he tried for us to find uh, the owner of the press and uh, couldn't come up with anything. So once he couldn't find the owner, it, it, uh, the press technically belongs to the owner of the building and um, we put in an offer to possibly get the press for the cost of removal and he accepted so that's where we're currently at right now. <laughs> what does it weigh? Do you know? It uh, weighs between 1500 and 1800 pounds and it's uh, cast iron. <laughs> so removal is not simple? It's not, no. Mm -hmm. It's going to take uh, quite a few people and quite a few hands and quite a few uh, strong, strong bodies to get it out of here. <laughs> what would a press like this have been used for? Um, my guesses are that it was probably used for printing. It wasn't. It wasn't used to print newspapers or anything of that scale. It probably would have been used to print, uh, like invitations, posters, handbills, broadsides, that kind of thing. And if you take a look around in here, you see all the type that was used, and it looks as if it was used for maybe yearbooks for um, high schools and that kind of thing, just by looking at the type that's around. Or at least most recently, there's no telling what it was used for originally. <laughs> Can you attain? Current standard quality with a press like this? Um, Even better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Depends what your definition of quality is. Well, I'm thinking the finished product. Is it, is it tack sharp? Is it clear? Is oh, yeah. It oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's as sharp and as clear as you could ever hope to get. <laughs> and a big difference, too, is that because the machine is so heavy and powerful, it actually indents the text into the paper. So when you're looking at it, it'll be an embossed letter rather than just something that sits on the surface. So that's that's pretty noticeable as well. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, is this machine complete? Basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. The only things it's missing are some really simple, simple things. It's missing its chase, which is a part right in here that you set the type in, but that can easily be improvised. You can make one out of wood or you can get one, you know, I could, I could find one online from presses that have been scrapped or that kind of thing. I'm told that these presses aren't that uncommon, that there are a number of them, of them around. Is, do you know about that, or is that true? No, I don't think it's true. There's not too many of these. No? What, <laughs> what will you do with it when you refurbish it? We will be printing with it. We will be printing, and uh, we'll be printing things kind of like what I mentioned before. We'll be printing posters, invitations, CD covers. Like anything that you can imagine to print, we could print with it. And uh, basically, we also want to do uh, education and outreach with it. 
So we have a collection of smaller letterpress equipment right now that we're just getting started with. We have two smaller tabletop presses that operate on basically the same principle as this machine, just on a smaller scale. And uh, we have also have a proof press, uh, but we want to start teaching people about letterpress. We want to um, hold workshops and, and uh, invite people into our studios to learn what this kind of obsolete technology and, and techniques are all about, because I think that uh, there would be an interest and we already have people asking we just don't have the capabilities as of this moment in time so and this form of printing was um, us being graduates from the printmaking program here at the University of Regina it's actually not even offered there as far as we know it's not offered anywhere in Saskatchewan um, it's pretty obsolete to find any letterpress um, studios actually in Canada you, you do come across more in the states that are running as whether they be educational based or running through, you know, as printing services, um, but it's hard to come by. Is there any distinction between a press like this? I'm, I'm thinking in terms of the output, or, or rather the finished product. Is there a qualitative difference? Are there things that this press can do that an offset press can't do? Um, are there some advantages to having and using a press like this? Well, I think when you look at it from a printer's point of view and a printmaker's point of view, which we are, there's a certain um, tactile quality and and actually uh, visceral nature, like Caitlin was mentioning before. You actually get an impression into the paper where with offset, uh, you don't. You get, uh, you know, it's just something where the ink lays on top of the paper. So, I mean, it's kind of a subtle difference, maybe to some, but. Uh, to somebody who's looking for letterpress uh, or to printers like ourselves, there is really, there is a difference in the printed outcome. So there is some real value in this press and, and a good reason for retaining and Undeniably. Yeah. 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 Apart from its funky quality. <laughs> okay. as, far as, as far as presses go, it's extremely fast too. Like um, if you're using an etching press, it takes a long time to make one print, uh, but you get this wheel spinning and you can make print after print like within a few seconds. Is it power driven or is it done, done by hand? Uh, this one right now doesn't have a motor, um, but you can either attach a motor to it or you can run it with a treadle. So either or. And the treadle is missing from this? Uh, as far as I can tell, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we've discussed that it's going to be difficult to move and it's going to require some effort. How? Uh, have you got that organized or are you working on that still? We're in the works now um, talking to a couple different people in the city. Um, what we need are um, some millwrights or machinists that have experience um, taking apart and putting together um, machines like this um, because there's definitely elements that will have to get taken off to lighten the load but mm -hmm. also for it to be somewhat movable. Um, so there are people in the city that we have contacted and we starting in the works to develop, you know, a plan of action of what and how we can do this. Are they interested in this? Oh, definitely. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, are there hard costs involved as well? Is this going to be expensive? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, we're you know, looking. You're going to have to restore it or refurbish it? And... That's going to be something that we can probably, a lot of that we can take on ourselves with uh -huh. the help of our, our former printmaking prof, but the big costs are going to come in hiring a professional to take it apart because even though it's kind of this big hunk of, of iron, cast iron of this age actually becomes kind of brittle. Mm. Um, so you can't be overly um, rough with it. So to hire somebody to know who knows how to handle this sort of material of this age to take it apart um, is going to cost some money and then also to hire movers to move it safely. Um, we don't want to wreck the machine taking it out of here at all. Well, you've so. got machined components in as well. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. be careful with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you're, I understand having a fundraising event. Mm -hmm. yeah. When is that? It's on the 26th, August 26th, on a Friday at the Creative City Centre, just above Logie's Shoes on Hamilton. And we've got Bell playing, uh, members of Indigo Joseph and Tiny playing music for us. And we're also going to be selling prints and t-shirts and there will be licensed and it's just going to be a great big party. And there will be even some little letter presses there that people can use and try out for themselves. So we want it to be a cohesive, you know, printing event that we share with, uh, with some musicians that we're really proud to work with too. Are there advanced tickets or tickets at the door or anything? Just at the door. Just and just it's a uh, donation. 
Yes, yeah, donation. just a donation of $10. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.